Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe how the particles are arranged in solids, liquids and gases, and how this arrangement changes during melting, freezing, boiling and condensing. You should then be able to explain why some substances have higher melting and boiling points than others. And finally, if you're a higher tier student, you should be able to describe the limitations of this simple particle model. Now, there are three common states of matter, and I'm showing them here. We've got solids, liquids, and gases. As you can see, the particles are arranged differently in these three states of matter, and you need to be able to describe how they're arranged. We're going to start by looking at the features of solids, and then explain these features using particle theory. Firstly, solids are extremely hard to compress, in other words, squeeze. That's because the particles in a solid are packed together in a regular pattern, with almost no spaces between the particles. Secondly, solids have a fixed shape, and they cannot flow from place to place. That's because in a solid, the particles can vibrate, but they cannot move from place to place. OK, let's look at liquids now. Just like solids, liquids are extremely hard to compress, and again, that's because the particles are close together, with not many spaces between them. Unlike solids, liquids take the shape of their container, and they can flow from place to place. And that's because the particles in a liquid can move. OK, we're going to look now at gases. Firstly, gases are extremely easy to compress. That's because the particles in gases are widely spaced. Secondly, gases spread out and fill the space of their container. And that's because the particles in the gas move quickly and randomly. Now, we can change the state of a substance by putting in or taking out energy. If we heat a solid, it can change state to a liquid. This is called melting, and this takes place at the melting point. Now, as you can see, the particles in a liquid are moving around, so they've got more kinetic energy than the particles in a solid. This means that we have to put energy in to convert a solid into a liquid. This energy is needed to break the forces of attraction between the particles and a solid. Once those forces of attraction are broken, the particles can now move around. In other words, we've changed the solid into a liquid. Now, there's one really important fact that you need to understand. The stronger the forces of attraction between the particles, the more energy we have to put in to break these forces and the higher the melting point. I'm showing you here a wax candle. Candle wax is a solid with a relatively low melting point. In candle wax, the forces of attraction between the particles are relatively weak, so they're fairly easy to break. This shows sodium chloride. Sodium chloride is also a solid. However, in sodium chloride, the forces of attraction between the particles are very strong. So sodium chloride has a very high melting point. Now, if we cool a liquid, then we can convert it back to a solid, and this is called freezing. Freezing takes place when we cool a liquid back down to its melting point. When a substance freezes, the forces of attraction between the particles reform. Now, if we heat a liquid, we can convert it into a gas. This is called boiling, and boiling takes place at the boiling point. Just like before, if there are strong forces of attraction between the particles, then the boiling point will be high. That's because it takes a lot of energy to break those strong forces of attraction and boil the liquid. Now, if we take a gas and cool it down, we can convert it back to a liquid. This is called condensing. Condensing takes place at the same temperature as boiling, in other words, the boiling point. And when a substance condenses, the forces of attraction between the particles reform. OK, now if you're a higher tier student, then you need to be able to describe the limitations of the simple particle model of solids, liquids and gases. Firstly, the simple particle model assumes that all particles are solid spheres. Now, this is not the case. Particles have lots of different shapes, and they're not solid. Secondly, in the simple particle model shown here, it's assumed that there are no forces between the particles. Now, as we've seen, this is not correct. In fact, the forces of attraction between the particles have a major impact on the melting and boiling points of a substance. You'll find plenty of questions on this topic in my Vision Workbook, 
which you can get by clicking on the link above.